Hi everyone, my name is Savit. Today I'll be explaining about my chemistry automate models. So how I got this idea was one day I was playing with embroidery rings and I thought I could mix my chemistry model using these itself. So this is this model is solid sphere model discovered by John Dalton in 1808. This model is the plum pudding model discovered by JJ Thompson in 1904. This model is the planetary model uh, discovered by Ernest Rutherford in 1911. And this last model, the solar system model, discovered by Neil Bohr in 1913. Thank you. This is his project on a simple machine. In a playground, we'll be able to find these simple machines. Uh, on a slide, we'll be able to find an inclined plane. On a merry-go-round, we'll be uh, able to find a wheel and axle. On a seesaw, we'll be able to find a falcon. And on a spring rider, we'll be able to find a spring. And on swing, it's a second-class lever. And this is a net climber. It has an inclined plane. And a shovel and bucket is a second-class lever. And this is the atomic models. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Akshit. Today I'm going to be explaining about the timeline of the atomic model and how it has evolved over time. The first model we are going to look at is by Democritus, uh, which is a normal one. Then the second model is by Dalton. He created the atomic model. Then the next one is by Thomson. He created the uh, plum pudding model. And then it's by Rutherford who created the nucleus model and then we have the planetary model by Niel Bohr and this is the quantum model by famous scientists. Thank you. Hello, this is my project. Uh, we were assigned to make a project of marine life and I had to show all the abiotic and biotic factors. I had to add invertebrates and so I've added all these creatures in it. I had a hobby of making art and I really knew how to make raisin art so I decided why not to combine both of them. So in this I have added many creatures such as I've added jellyfish, octopus, snails, basically the uh, category mollusks. I've added sea urchins and this, this is a habitat of um, water which is basically marine animals. And I had added mixture of two and a half, so one cup raisin, uh, one cup raisin and two cups hardener. And then I added a pigment, which is blue color pigment, and I mixed it with sand to make the bottom layer seabed. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kiara. My name is Sanvi, and my name is Anvisha. So here we have made a diorama, and the invertebrates included are a starfish, which is an echinodermata a lobster and a crab, which is a crustacean, and a squirrel, which is a sponge. I pass it on to Anvesha to speak about abiotic and biotic factors. So the abiotic factors are the ocean, the rocks, and the sunlight. And the biotic factors are the animals over here, the invertebrates. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Everyone, good morning. I'm Ishwara Pulsani from grade 6A, Kannur International School. So uh, here I wanted to present to you the invertebrates in a rainforest biome. So uh, first I'll start with the abiotic and biotic factors. So uh, abiotic factors are um, that of which are non-living. For example, the webs, the spider sp uh, spins and the rocks and the biotic factors, all the trees and living organisms here. So um, there are... Um, there is an acronym to talk about uh, invertebrates. Uh, it is a mess. So based on that, I have uh, put all my invertebrates. So under segmented worms, we have centipedes. Uh, these also fall under myropods because they have a hard outer covering. Then um, under crustaceans, which have a hard outer exoskeleton, we have um, a small uh, lobster, uh, lobster there. And then uh, we have... Um, <clears throat> insects such as uh, the cockroach here, they settle in uh, dark and moist places. Then uh, under the arachnid family, we have spiders here and we, show, we have some of the characteristics of spiders here, uh, uh, spinning webs. So these fall under arachnids. Then uh, we have some more insects like 
a housefly and an ant um these all uh, their characteristics and we can see some of their properties by looking at where they settle for example uh, we can take um we can look at the behavior of the loft, uh, lobster as they stay in moist spaces as well and then uh, we have um segmented larvae which then evolve into ants so these are larvae here and uh, other animals like praying ants mantis bees and more thank you